and welcome to Let's Go Eat, the Hair Leaders podcast about eating and drinking in the bluegrass. I'm Janet Patton, and I cover food and bourbon and craft beer. I'm Cheryl Truman. I cover business and features. And I'm Sally Shear, and I'm the lifestyles and business editor. We're here today at Lexington Diner, which is right downtown, kind of tucked behind all of the construction going on at 21C, <laughs> across from the old courthouse, which they will be fixing up. They will be, and near the farmer's market. So if you haven't been around the farmer's market, come around to the other side and take a look at Lexington Diner. We're yep. going to be talking with Chef Renata West Riley in a little bit about their new menu. It is a super location, and I am so delighted to be back here because I remember I came the day you opened, and it was, we had a foot of snow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it well. Oh, and the food was good, too, right? Food. Is that what you're going to yeah, say? Yeah, but, yeah. Yes, but yeah, <laughs> you had to weather. really trudge through here. Yes. <laughs> well, now it's spring, finally, Yay! and we can all... Oh, that was um, a year ago. But. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Be that as it may. We're we can all celebrate. Um, and I have not... I went to the farmer's market, but I have not had any asparagus yet. They've had some, mm -hmm. but have you guys... No, I've no. not had it yet either. And it's always yeah. kind of nice to have the first kind of taste mm -hmm. of spring, mm -hmm. although I'm not um, a crazy asparagus fan, but I, I love I love the first greens of spring. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, It's kind of like, yeah, I mean, you, it's something you have once or twice maybe a year. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not going to eat the stuff out of the can, that's for sure. Um, no, who would? And uh, it's the week of Derby, and we have so much. How did much, that happen? <laughs> everything is Derby, Derby, Derby this week. Um, and Derby, to me, always makes you think of things like beaten biscuits. And I did a really fun piece a couple of weeks ago on how they make beaten biscuits, interviewing this guy, uh, Charles Logan, who is in his 80s and, and reconditions the rollers that you pretty much have to have to make the real beaten biscuits. I mean, theoretically, you could do it on your own if you have Can, you know, we, show? can we do show and tell? Yeah. Can these, we take them out of the package? We can take them out of the package. Right. He made these, and and one of the beauties of the beaten Wrapped biscuits... Wrapped them nicely in wax He paper. did, is that they keep forever, he said. They're they're made to be a, a long-term biscuit. They make, they make them Because they're too. like the hard pack of bread. Right? A little bit, right, right. Hey, and they're hard as a rock. Probably they are by but now. But that's what makes them... Yeah, now they are kind of hard, but... And, you can have one. But beautiful. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. And also, you if you roll them, you get like Jennifer Aniston's arms, right? Probably, yes. Because Very beautiful. You have to, even with the even with the machine, you have to do it for like 30 minutes mm -hmm. just to get oh, all of go. the air in. But that is the beauty of his, is that they actually do break just apart, right apart into these beautiful layers. And mm -hmm. I had some uh, that day just right out of the oven, and they were fantastic. Of course they were. Yeah. They were just so great, right out of the oven. Sounds hot. wonderful. Butter or sorghum would be would be perfect. Or I don't country know. Country ham. So there may be Might lots be of these country. on Derby menus this weekend. Oh, I, I expect so. Ham or but even if even if you don't things. get these, even if you just have regular biscuits, you with can get butter biscuits at, at Donut Days, where you can also get <gasps> jockey cookies. Oh, cute! In the colors, cute, cute of the cute, horses. Cute. In yeah, the I recommend having a plate of because you know <laughs> you're going to yell for one of them, and you know that at least one of them you're want to go after the race. You're going to want to go. Before you eat it. Especially if you bet money on it. Right. <laughs> that would be so cute. Frosty. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for this Wednesday's paper, we yes. looked at Derby drinks. Yes. Including mint juleps. Um, Which you can now apparently buy in a bottle. Like yeah. the whole thing. Right. In right. a bottle. Cocktails well, in a bottle. A variation of yeah, cocktails. Yeah, it's kind of a new trend to have the barrel cocktail. The mint julep doesn't quite fit into that category, but... Now this year you have the old Forester mint julep, and and I am I am not crazy about the mint julep. I mean, once you've had one made for you on Derby morning by Master Distiller Chris Morris oh, with the real Woodford Reserve <laughs> bourbon, everything else is going to fail. Yeah, world's smallest violin going off over yeah. here. Um, well, I was okay, my... Janet. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Well, one It'll one a year is, is enough. You're right, but. I didn't really care for the early times mint julep, but I have not tried the old Forester, which is the new one. The old Forester uh, is the one they're putting in the mint julep this year. And I will, I will give it a shot. Why this, did Why the change? Well, you know, Brown Foreman has long been a sponsor. Brown Foreman makes both. Brown Foreman is really kind of elevating its old, old Forester brand and trying to get it back out there in a big way. And so they they said, you know, Old Forester is actually. Mm -hmm older than the Kentucky Derby. It's one of the few things it is. And so they're putting these two 
these two brands together in a way that, you know, kind of makes sense. I think it's... The first mint julep I had was when I was new at the Herald Leader and covered, helped cover the Derby for the first time. And as soon as the race was over, Bill Pinkston, who was one of our computer tech guys mm -hmm. who was there, said, let's go get a mint julep. And we ran downstairs from the press box and over and found a booth that was still open because, you know, usually they close I'm those places right up. I'm surprised you find one. And we found a place and we got a derby glass and we had a mint julep in it. And I, I thought it was, you know. The best thing in the world. You know, one of the check off my bucket list things that I want to exactly. do. Exactly. Drink exactly. a mint julep at the... Kentucky Derby, you know, and it was there, a wonderful There are some tastes drink. that, you know, are, are just associated with a particular yeah. moment, and I think that, you know, maybe one of them, you know, have, having a julep like that, yep. having, you know, your first mm -hmm. day of late on a really, really hot day. Yeah, right. Um, yep. Or, you know, Anita Madden, I believe, used to tell a story about uh, once a year she would go to Churchill Downs and have um, a red hot hot dog, and that would be her. <laughs> her there you go. Downs. That's, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, we do have the recipe for mid juleps in the paper. Yes. And a couple of alternatives, Alltech, uh, which makes their uh, barrel-aged ale, says that they actually, a lot of people uh, tell them they like to do kind of uh, mm. mint julep beer. They take the uh, pick mint, muddle it, and then pour the beer over it and put some, some mint in it. It has to be the fresh mint, which you can also get at the farmer's market. Right. Several of them are going right. to have it this or weekend. Or in lots of people's backyards, really. And, yeah, <laughs> and they say that's very good. Um, but we have a, a sort of a new thing from Alltech that we can talk oh, yeah. about. And it's a little bit, it, it kind of marries the two things, which is the bourbon barrel ale. And this is an old fashioned that is, it, it, it's their ale made to taste a little bit like, like an old fashioned, like an old fashioned which is a drink with, with orange and cherries if you, if you know the classic cocktail. And, um, it does have a little bit of a fruity smell. Mm -hmm. It does have a little bit of that flavor in there. It comes through. Janet gave me one, but I haven't tried it yet. I'm sorry to say. I'm that sorry we don't have smell o vision. You're just going <laughs> ale brewed it's with cherries good. and orange peel, aged in oak bourbon and bitters barrels. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even put the mint in there. I think I'd just go with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole piece about Jefferson's bourbon, which has come out with um, a barrel aged Manhattan. Which yeah, I think would be another fun cocktail to try too. kind of in a bottle. Yeah. I'm here with Chef Renata West Riley, and she's going to talk about the new menu that you have, which looks like it has some really, really yummy things on it. Yeah, it's very creative. Uh, we've had a lot of fun creating this menu. Uh, I mean, it really u utilizes a lot of Kentucky Proud products. Mm. Uh, if we don't make it in house ourselves, we source it locally so that's terrific and you have a lot of great salads up here i'm assuming a lot of that stuff comes from local producers yes. and tell me about your burgers down here uh we've got a couple new burgers on the menu that people are raving about uh, one is the southern charm oh. all of my meats i use through cooper brothers farms or gourmet meats uh, so it's local drug free antibiotic free hormone free uh so it's great meat that's yeah. what you got to start out with but the Southern Charm has pimento cheese that we make in-house, uh, fried green tomato, and uh, homemade chow chow. You can't go wrong yeah, that, with that. that, that, that. <laughs> Nothing I don't like about that. Right. So there's that. We do a Thai burger uh, with a lot of Asian vegetables, mm. uh, you know, a Thai peanut sauce, and then that burger. And people tend to it's almost like a banh mi burger. Yeah. Do people, like. I mean, do, is that what people really like to get is burgers? Is that a big hit around here? Burgers are a big hit. The salads are a big hit. Uh, really, I mean, it's we've done studies, and it's so di my menu is so diverse, and it really hits with a lot of different people. Yeah. So it's very unique, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you do you get mostly a lunchtime crowd, but you have breakfast now too, we right? Have, we do have breakfast, and that's you know that I really want to build that yeah. part of my my business. Uh, but lunch is just, it's taken off. I mean, to, we've been open 15 months, and I'm telling you what, it's been overwhelming at how incredible it's, it's grown. Well, that's terrific. Yeah, I remember you had something, something new that was on the menu for breakfast that sounded pretty good, uh, maybe a peach Yes, peach peach, thing? yes, it's uh, peaches and cream, French toast. Oh. All of our French toast we really go over the over the top with. Uh, some we use uh, Sunrise Bakery Brioche Loaf. Oh, yeah. Uh, but this peaches and cream, it's kind of a spiced peach uh, with a little like a sweet and cream cheese. Yeah. And then it's got a white chocolate ganache drizzle. Uh, it's that fantastic. That's great. Yeah. 
But you're going to be doing something really special, you were telling me, for a coming weekend, the weekend before Mother's Day, right? Yes, uh, this coming weekend and Saturday of uh, the following week, I'm going to be featuring uh, Rona Roberts' cookbook. Yeah, uh, Savoring Kentucky. Savoring Kentucky, yeah. Mm. I'm going to be featuring a lot of stuff to create an artisan brunch menu on the weekends. Oh, great. Yeah, every, every weekend, uh, every two weeks, we rotate an artisan menu. Uh, it's, you know, a few... It's just a few items, maybe eight, ten items, uh, and it features a lot of locally sourced stuff. Great. Uh, I, I try to use, you know, anyone from Phil Dunn to Weta Michael. I use a lot of their different recipes and incorporate those in, you know. I hope you'll pick up her, her cornbread with the lime dressing. That's yes. one of my favorites. Yes. That yes. rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been fun collaborating with her on this, and uh, she'll be signing books uh, upstairs at uh, during this time too. So, so do you know what the hours are for the brunches? Yes, my hours uh, Saturday are 7 to 3, uh, Sunday is 10 to 3. So that will be this weekend and next. You know, and we're also utilizing the uh, the farmer's market, right. which is just not even a block away. Uh, that's where we're going to be getting a lot of our vegetables and stuff. I'm real excited, you know, to get in the kitchen with her and, yeah. and see what happens. It That'll be, be fun. fun. Well, thanks so much for letting us come down today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. I'm going to be at the Derby, so I won't be going to any Derby parties. But I'm going to a Derby party in the big city of Scottsville, Kentucky, which is down in Allen County, with oh. a friend and some friends, and it's a long story. But anyway, one of the things that I'm taking, because I love this recipe and it's easy, are these pecan tassies, oh. which are basically miniature Derby pies. And you just use the phyllo crust, the little mm -hmm. pie shells and the phyllo crust that I bought 15 in a box for $1.79 or something like that at Kroger this weekend. Fill them up with pecans and brown sugar and butter and mini chocolate chips and bake them for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Um, Bite-sized little derby cakes. Yum. Yum. Yeah. Oh, and you can put a little bourbon in there, too. I was wondering about that. So I'm going to make those this week and take those down there, and maybe I'll bring some into the office. We'll see. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> They're delicious. And speaking of derby parties, there there is a oh, new one this year? There is. Bradley Picklesheimer is back in town. He ran Cafe LMNOP, which many people will recall um, with great affection. He is back in town. He is launching his first ever derby eve party at the bar complex. Tickets are still, still available, although um, VIP tickets have been sold out and there will be a couple of signature cocktails uh, involved in this. There will be entertainment, there will be dancing, um, there will be, <laughs> how, how to say it, that sort of derby e feeling that you really haven't gotten since the Madden party stopped. You, you uh, called it a bacchanal. I did call it a bacchanal. Bacchanal, yes, she did. And, you know, it's a word we don't get to use enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> there aren't enough occasions for case, it. That's the sad thing. <laughs> go to Kentucky.com if you would like to buy tickets. It will uh, send you to the link. Um, and uh, send us your impressions because he would like to make it annual. It's Derby Week and let's go eat. Let's go.